Thanks, Brian, and good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm here to talk to you this evening about a report that MB released last week. You might have heard about that in the, in the media. If you haven't seen a copy of that, then I uh, advise you to go to the MB website, and the MB website address is, is up on the uh, PowerPoint, and you can uh, read a copy of this. I just want to talk through that report and, um, and cover off exactly what we're trying to do at MB, what the purpose of the report was, what the scope of the survey was, what we actually did, and what the findings were and the recommendations that government has as a result of that survey. So without further ado, let me just get straight into this. So first of all, why did MB conduct the survey? MB is the building regulator, and it has a, a duty to monitor uh, current and emerging trends in the building industry. And certainly we've been um, hearing noise about um, concerns about quality in the Christchurch rebuild. And so it is part of our duty to, to investigate and have a look at those concerns. So that is the basis of this particular piece of work. It comes on the back of uh, an earlier survey where MB looked at 14 homes uh, which were referred to us. Those homes were homes where homeowners felt that they had concerns about the quality and uh, 13 of those 14 homes um, MB confirmed had uh, issues with the repairs but they were never representative of the whole repair program and so to get a better and uh, a deeper and broader understanding of the repairs in Christchurch we set about doing a broader and, and deeper survey and so uh, we ended up surveying a 101 homes and I can just talk you through what we did, uh, what the survey looked at, and, and why we looked at it. First of all, our focus was on structural repairs, which were exempt from a building consent. And in the media, it's, it's been reported that we're just focusing on foundations. That's not true. We were looking at the st structural repairs for the whole uh, home, uh, starting from the roof and right down to the foundations. So we're looking at the total, total building. The reason why we focused on structural repairs is because the structural performance of a home is critical to its, its lifetime performance. And um, you know, some of those repairs are hidden from view and can't easily be seen, especially by the homeowner. So we focused on what we thought were the areas where, uh, if there are problems, um, they're most likely to be hidden and of most significance in terms of co-compliance. We focused on what we called exempted repairs, in the Building Code and the Building Act, um, some repairs can be done without getting a building consent. Uh, even some structural repairs, even though they're minor, can be done without a building consent. And we figured that those repairs are the ones most likely to show a non-compliance issue if there was one. So we focused on Schedule 1 exemptions um, and homes that had some element of a structural repair. Uh, just just a, a note about exempted repairs, they don't need a building consent and they don't have a, a house inspection by a consent officer from the City Council. And so those repairs can be done without City Council getting involved in either consent or the inspection of that repair. Nevertheless, whoever does that repair, it's their responsibility that the repair is still compliant with the building code, even though there's not a building consent. Um, what we didn't look at, we didn't look at council consented repairs. So uh, excluded from our survey were structural repairs that had a building consent. We felt that those repairs, uh, because they were inspected by the council, were more likely to be co-compliant. And we didn't look at cosmetic repairs like paintwork. Uh, those sorts of repairs uh, can be seen quite easily by homeowners, so are more likely to be reported. While we're focused on the quality of the workmanship, we did have a bit of a look at the repair strategy, but we didn't report on that because we didn't really have enough information to form really strong conclusions about repair strategy. But we did have, make some observations about that in the report, and you can re uh, read that. The other thing we didn't do is consider whether or not the repairs met the requirements of the EQC, EQC Act. That is a different test to the Building Act. So what did we actually do? Uh, well, the 101 homes that we repaired were selected from 2,700 addresses supplied to us by the participating agencies. 
and uh, the agencies that were a part of the survey were EQC, and they supplied homes that were um, repaired under Fletcher EQR, and also some opt-outs. Uh, some homes were provided to us by Southern Response and by IAG, private insurers, and we also looked at some Housing New Zealand homes. Uh, we sent out letters to 450 homeowners, so we selected 450 homes from those 2,700 addresses. Everybody who came back to us saying well, we want to be part of the survey, we said yes, great, we want to come and look at your home. 108 initially said yes, we want to be part of the survey, seven dropped out, some went overseas, some were just too busy, and we ended up looking at 101 homes. Uh, after we had those 101 homes in our survey, we had a team go out and inspect them, and that took about three months. The team included a, a registered building server, independent of MB, a structural, registered structural engineer, independent of MB, and some MB staff there to assist with the record keeping. Went out, did a survey of the home, came back and provided a review and assessment of those 101 homes. So what did we find? So here are the key findings, and I've just taken the key highlights out of the report, and if you want some more depth analysis, I recommend you go and have a look at the report. First of all, none of these repairs we considered to have life safety concerns, no dangerous homes, and no concerns for the um, safety of the occupants due to the repairs. Uh, we did find some repairs were non-compliant with the building code, and I must emphasise that uh, most of these non-compliances were relatively minor and easy to fix, uh, but we did find 32 homes that were non-compliant. A further 23 homes had what we call minor defects, um, and the rest of the repairs were code compliant. Uh, interestingly enough, the, the more complex repairs uh, generally were done very well. They were code compliant. The homes that we found were um, done less well, were the uh, homes that had a jack and pack repair, and often those homes also had some repairs to the perimeter concrete foundation. And it's that class of home, really, which um, 30 out of the 32 non-compliances homes were in that category. Um, so really, the other two non-compliant homes um, were something other than a house that had a suspended timber frame floor and a concrete perimeter foundation. So most of the non-compliant repairs were involved uh, with homes where a jack and pack relieving exercise had taken place. Uh, one other repair outcome or result which I think is important for us is that nine of the 32 homes that had non-compliant repairs um, were undertaken by a licensed building practitioner, an LPP, and um, MB is having a look at those nine and seeing whether or not it's just a one-off slip-up or whether there's a um, situation of repeated poor performance and, um, and those investigations may well end up in some sort of prosecution. And there were two uh, homes that were undertaken by people who claimed to be LPPs and it appears they weren't. Um, you know, I guess just to summarise, the results from Amy's viewpoint were disappointing um, and um, we believe that some recommendations for changing what we found uh, are needed. Let me, before I go on to the recommendations, just talk about Jack and Pack. Uh, I guess most people in the room will know what a Jack and Pack repair looks like, but just in case you don't, a Jack and Pack repair is a, a well-tested, uh, well-used um, method for relevelling these sorts of homes, these homes with a suspended timber floor on piles. If it's done right, it's a, it's a good repair method. It's not treated or considered technically difficult, and that's why it can be an exempted repair and doesn't require building consent, unless, of course, it's a substantial repair um, um, where a large portion of the floor is being relevelled. Some recommendations for change. Let me just quickly go through these because um, government has taken this seriously and we uh, have sat down and said, look, the results of the survey mean that we have to do some things, and these are the things that we're committed to doing. Um, first of all, we're recommending the agencies, the insurance companies involved in the repair program and their PMOs um, fix up the defects that we found in the 101 homes 
or the portion of the 100 homes that were part of the MB survey. The second thing is, and it's part of that first bullet point, we have recommended that uh, agencies and their PMOs go out and have a look at all exempted repairs which had some structural repair component to it and make sure that they're co-compliant. So it's a recommendation to look at many, many homes um, in the order of thousands. Uh, the second bullet point, the next recommendation is, and a lot of the agencies have already done this and responding uh, very quickly to our recommendations, is that if they're not already robust quality assurance and inspection processes in place, that they put them in place. Our take on what happened and why it happened was uh, workmanship which wasn't up to scratch wasn't picked up properly by an inspection or a quality assurance program and it slips through. And um, so our recommendation is that robust inspection and quality assurance processes are put in place so that work is, um, deficient work is found and fixed. Uh, MB has been training uh, industry on jack and pack repair methods and we committed to try and increase their penetration and improve the competency of the whole sector on that particular repair methodology. Um, we're recommending that agencies be vigilant and just employ people who are competent in a particular repair method when they go and do a repair, and particularly jacking and packing. I guess MB uh, is starting to ask some questions about the appropriateness of exemptions from building consents for foundation repairs. Even though we believe this repair methodology is relatively simple and straightforward and should be done relatively easily by someone with the right skills. We will have a look at that. And um, the final recommendation which we've put up to government and which has been largely accepted is that non-compliant work signed off by an LBP should be further investigated, which we are doing.